Hello everyone, hopefully I'm coming through uh, adequate enough. Um, so the way the stream will work is, this is an introduction to TFM. Where did it come from? How does it work? Uh, we will be doing some demos. So there is some desktop screen share that is going on in the video. Um, for those of you who can't see it uh, because of a disability, I will describe and a little bit later on I will have NVDA on because it's a critical part of TFM. I'm going to withhold questions until the last 10 minutes or so of the video so if you have any comments or questions drop them in the chat field um, and I'll look at them uh, at the end when we do the FAQ section. And the first part of this we'll just be talking. Um, so where did TFM come from? So first of all, uh, TFM, Tango Foxtrot Mic, stands for Talking Flight Monitor. It originally was built by Jason Fair. Um, as a result of someone in the BVI pilots community asking him uh, for a name of a city. And so he did some experimenting around, found out that he could do that, and then people were asking for other things like altitude, speed, comms, radios, uh, a few other things. And he was able to do that. And then I had come across a TFM as a user and had some ideas of my own. And so we talked about it. And we joined forces after that. TFM has just ballooned and exploded into uh, what it is today. Now, how does TFM work? So TFM gets data from the simulator P3D, made by Lockheed, FSX, uh, Flight Simulator 10, made by Microsoft uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, also FSX. Steam Edition, which is the same thing, but hosted by Steam, a uh, popular gaming platform. Unfortunately, it does not work with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, uh, partly because they're still working on offsets with FSUI PC uh, and the accessibility issues that have gone on uh, in the past with Flight Simulator 2020. We've withheld for now on that point. Uh, what is FSUI PC? I get that question a lot of times. So FSUI PC is sort of a bridge between third-party applications like TFM or GSX, all these other add-ons, and the simulator and its whole goal is to make it easy to retrieve and send data to and from the simulator. And that is what TFM uses is FSUI PC uh, in order to get and send data from the simulator. Now how does TFM work? So the basic part of TFM works by pressing a layered hotkey which we'll refer to as the autopilot key which on US keyboards is the left bracket key it is just to the right of the P on your keyboard and the right bracket key which is the TFM key which is what we'll refer to it as right bracket key it's just to the right of the left bracket key on US keyboards. Now pressing the left bracket or the autopilot key will produce two beeps 
pressing the right bracket key by itself will produce one beep. In this particular demo you will not hear the beeps. Uh, instead you'll just hear what TFM will do for you. So the simple part of it is TFM will retrieve things like altitude, speed, vertical speed, your heading, it will even give you the area you're flying over. For an example, it may say Daytona Beach, Florida, USA. Or it might say no city nearby North Atlantic Ocean. You can also get it to give you the nearest city, uh, which is in the format of city bearing distance and uh, we won't see any samples of retrieving cities today because this is a basic getting started and so right now I will let's turn on NVDA so people can hear what goes on. All right. Lockheed. L O C. If you can hear NVDA, hold the new list. Prepare to be five fifteen or twenty three. Lockheed Martin Register. I switched Lockheed over Martin to Register. the simulator. Uh, if anybody in chat there can let me know if they heard that. Alright, so we will gather that uh, NVDA is turned on. We are in the simulator. Lockheed Martin Register 3 Part 3D Register 35. I use the Lockheed Party Part 3D simulator for my personal needs. At this point, we have a payware aircraft uh, made by PMDG, and it's the 737-900. Uh, I did that because it will give us the best range of examples on how TFM works. So sitting inside of the simulator in the cockpit, we can get simple things. Like I said earlier, we can get altitude, speed, heading, vertical speed, how much fuel is there. And so let's do that now. In order to do that, we'll press right bracket. Folder view with TFM e. TFM first. Loading airport database. Current aircraft. PMDG 737 900 ERMG 2 PMDG House Blended Windless. N739ER2019. 737 detected. 4. Number 1 ignition on. Number 2 ignition on. Number 1 generator active. Number 2 generator active. Number 1 fuel valve open. Number 2 fuel valve open. Airport database loaded. Alright, so in that startup. Uh, TFM startup, you heard quite a bit of information. Um, part of what TFM Lockheed does, let me get over here to the simulator again, is detect changes in aircraft state, uh, which we'll demonstrate here in a short little while. Uh, that, back to where we were, so for an example, altitude is the TFM key, which is right bracket, and then the letter A. 769 feet ASL. Now that's above sea level. What if you needed to know above ground? So you can hit the TFM key, right bracket, the letter G. Eight feet, high. Eight feet above ground. We can get fuel with right bracket F. Total fuel. 45,876.9 pounds, 6,848.1 gallons, total fuel flow, 1979. Okay, so we're burning 
just under 2,000 pounds of fuel per hour. Um, if you wanted to simulation rate one, see how fast you are simulating a flight. Let's right bracket E. Right bracket. Gear down. Dot. Shift E. Door one open. Tells you gear down. Whoops. How about we? Door one closed. Close the door. Again, it was right bracket. Gear down. Dot. Shift door E. Door one open. E. And it wants to open the door. Close. Door one closed. There we go. Or how about our speed? Which is right bracket. Zero knots indicated. Then S. Or ground speed. Right bracket. Zero knots ground speed. U. And we can do heading. Right bracket. Heading. 326. H. And on the autopilot side, it works similar to the TFM side. Now, breaking this down, the right bracket key, which is the TFM key, and then a subsequent key afterwards is mainly for reading output gauges like like we were demonstrating the ground speed or indicated air speed or even mock speed with right bracket mach 0 .00. then M those are all read only controls now the autopilot key but left bracket just to the right of the letter P on US keyboards is the autopilot. This will give you information about autopilot settings and it will also let you change them. For an example, following along with the right bracket key, if we press left bracket A for altitude. 10,000. So the autopilot altitude is set to 10,000 feet. What about speed? Zero knots indicated. Whoops. Left bracket S. 100. So the autopilot is set to 100 knots. Now what if we needed to change some of these values? Well, we could press left bracket, the modifier shift, and the letter A. Altitude edit selected 10,000. And it will bring up a window that will let you manipulate altitude controls. So this box One, here. Ten thousand selected. What if Two, we type zero, in zero, 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 zero. twenty thousand? Twenty thousand. And here we just saw TFM read us back twenty thousand. Because as I said earlier, TFM will read back different state changes uh, in the aircraft, so you have an idea on what it's doing. Especially if some automatic thing happens, like a light turns on or uh, some slow moving part finishes its movement, for an example, flaps. Uh, TFM will tell you when the flaps are set to a particular uh, flap position. Back to the altitude box. Altitude button, alt plus if you tab around, you have altitude button. Altitude hold off button, alt plus a. Off altitude hold off, VNAV level change off, off. Plus L. level change off, level change, altitude at 20, and then we're back to the altitude. Lockheed Martin Red. For our purposes, the rest of those controls, uh, we won't be covering them today, but in some future episode, we will cover those. Um, as I said, TFM will respond to events in the aircraft. For an example, parking brake on. If I turn on the parking brake, TFM will automatically say parking brake on, parking brake off, or off, depending on what state it's in. Now, if I try flaps, as a slow moving part. Flaps one. There we go. Flaps one. So flaps were moving. That's why TFM did not say anything. And it came to its final rest on flaps one. We can do it again. Gear 
again, slow moving. Flaps two. And there's flaps two. We don't normally use flaps two. Flaps five. And flaps five. Let's put them back down. And so this is how TFM is able to help blind pilots fly uh, freeware aircraft as well as payware aircraft. And our video series will be going down the payware aircraft route in the next video, uh, Flap zero. which is going to be next week, same time if it's available, and that will go through why payware instead of freeware. Um, TFM is free. It's open source. You can find it at www.talkingflightmonitor.com. I will put that in the description for those uh, who want to get a hold of it. You can download TFM on the website. You can also find it on GitHub. I will also put that in the description after the video is published. Uh, FSUIPC you can find at FSUIPC.com which I will also put in the description. And uh, I think we will open it up uh, to questions. So if anybody has any questions, I can go through them, or any of you can ask them if you haven't already. Okay, Cole Vanessa, you can hear NVDA. Um, Anyone with questions? I will put the links inside chat as well. Let's see. Okay, there's the links that I was talking about. Uh, I'll put them in the description again, as I said earlier. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, the question is, can people using JAWS take advantage of TFM? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, doesn't matter what screen reader you use. Uh, in fact, you don't even need to use a screen reader with it uh, because it will detect which one you're using. Uh, so it can adjust itself according to that. If you don't have one, it'll go into self-voicing mode. Um, people that don't use screen readers but use braille displays, it'll also work with your braille display. And those people who 
can see enough to read large print. Uh, TFM is uh, its user interface elements. I remember uh, printed out in 14 point times new Roman font. So it should be easy to read uh, regardless of whether you're using a magnifier or not. And so the idea too <clears throat> is that uh, TFM will let you uh, follow directions from cited person uh, from manuals printed by uh, and for cited people that you could follow the same checklists and procedures with flying that everyone else follows uh, that way uh, you're not isolated from the rest of the population that does this uh, because in the past it's been uh, a fact that BVI pilots have been isolated because they've had different software that did different things or flew for them instead of letting them do it themselves I will also give my email address uh, for TFM in the chat. And I'll put it in the description too. It's info at talkingflightmonitor.com. Again, I n f o at talkingflightmonitor.com All right, we have a few more minutes for uh, chat and questions if anybody has anything else. Um, okay, Vanessa, that's an interesting question. So the question is, can the, bio, can the visually impaired person take part in air traffic controlling as well as piloting, or is it limited to just one or the other? Um, mostly it's limited to piloting. There have been a few uh, BVI pilots that have managed to get through air traffic controlling uh, tests and um, the only thing that they're able to do is clearance and delivery which basically means that if a pilot requests from the airport uh, to go from point A to point B then that particular controller will say yes you were cleared to go or you're not cleared to go and that's about what we're limited to uh, in the event that you pass a test. So 
Yeah, most of it's limited to piloting. Uh, We got about one or two more minutes left. For questions or comments. Oh, and I might want to point out that uh, although TFM is free and open source, a lot of these other things are not. Um, so for an example, uh, the simulator can cost anywhere between $22 and $200. It just depends on which ones you get, what licenses you have. Uh, an interest in uh, FSU IPC that I talked about for a little bit earlier you don't have to buy a license for it but it does unlock extra features if you do uh, that is I think right now it's the equivalent of 45 US dollars and so you can uh, if you get heavy into it, you can spend quite a few uh, dollars on it. Um, the lowest somebody's ever spent on simming uh, is sixty dollars. The highest I know of is like five or six thousand dollars, and part of that is because they have hardware uh, like flight sticks or uh, full yokes that replicate the real thing that you would find in an airplane cockpit uh, hardware panels that you can set up around your uh, simming space we don't have any of that here all I have is a flight stick and simulator so I've tried to keep my cost relatively cheap Alright, last chance for comments and questions. Alright, since there's no other questions, we are going to end here and uh, if anybody needs any kind of assistance or has any questions that were not answered or asked on the stream today, you can send an email again to info at talkingflightmonitor.com. Again, info at talkingflightmonitor.com. And we will definitely try to get back to you as soon as we can. So uh, we will end it here and hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, look for another episode next week where we talk about the differences between payware and freeware aircraft and why TFM chose payware aircraft first. <laughs>